Hi, this is a tutorial video on balancing chemical equations with a focus on Science 10, but it's also a good recap for Chemistry 20 students. In front of you are 10 equations that need to be balanced. The blanks in front of them need to have whole numbers filled in. I'm going to pause for about 10 seconds. I would encourage you to pause this video if you haven't worked on these questions before. Fill them out and then hit unpause and you can see the answers. If you do look uh, in the menu, you'll be able to skip ahead to different answers. So maybe you just want to check answers 9 and 10. Uh, look for that in the slider on YouTube. So hopefully you're ready for the answers now. So going through the first couple of questions. Uh, in our first example, we have diatomic nitrogen. So we have nitrogen atoms. That little two underneath means that we have two nitrogens bonded together. Okay. This isn't crucial for the answer, but realizing we have a pair of them. And you know, our count of nitrogen has to stay in pairs. On the left-hand side, we have these two nitrogen, and on the right-hand side, we have one nitrogen in NH3 or ammonia. So to have two on both sides, we need to have more than one of these ammonia, so I'll put a two in front. Visually, what I just did was the equivalent of writing NH3 twice. In doubling the nitrogen, I also doubled the hydrogen, so there's now three and three, six of them. So we now have two nitrogen and two nitrogen. When there's no number in front, we treat it as a one. Uh, the hydrogen count, there's three and three, six here, so we need to have six on this side. They come in pairs, so we're going to need three pairs. So the correct coefficients are one, three, and six for the first question. The second question, we have three different elements now, potassium, chlorine, and oxygen. There's one potassium at the beginning, one potassium at the end, one chlorine at the beginning, one chlorine at the end. There are three oxygen at the beginning and only two at the end. There is no way with one number that we can balance uh, the oxygen, so we have to find the lowest common multiple of oxygen. So what multiple can we get on both sides? They come in multiples of three on the reactant side. Those three, six, nine, if we double or triple. Oxygen on the product side comes in pairs. So we could have multiples of pairs. So we could have two, four, six. So the first multiple that we have is six. So I'm going to scale oxygen up to six on both sides. So we have three of them here, so I have to double this to have six, and over here I have to triple to have six. That did mess up my potassium. I doubled the potassium and doubled the chloride. Two potassium, I can double this potassium chloride, and in doubling the potassium I also doubled the chloride. So the second one is now balanced. On to the third reaction, a little bit more complicated. Uh, we have multiple atoms and oxygen all over the place. My suggestion would be to tackle oxygen last. Uh, carbon is the only other non-ONH atom. Uh, I get, we tend to do ONH at the end, and particularly in this case, oxygen uh, last. There's only one carbon in CO2. There's six in our sugar. C6H12O6 is a simple sugar. So I can balance my carbon by putting a three in front of the CO2. Next, hydrogen. I have 12 at the end and they come in pairs in water. So I'm going to need six pairs to balance the oxygen. So now everything, sorry to balance the hydrogen. Now to deal with the oxygen, which is the trickiest. This is where a visual aid comes in really handy. I'm gonna count the oxygen atom on the reactant side and the product side. On the reactant side, they come in pairs in CO2 and there's six pairs, so that's 12 oxygen, plus we have some more. 
we have six times one O in water. So there's six oxygens in total in water. So in total, there's 18 between our two reactants. On the product side, we have six in our sugar, plus we're going to need the more in the form of pairs of oxygen. So let's see, how many more do we need? We've got 18 on the reactant side. We have six plus something on the product side. That would be 12 is what we need in total. Now they come in pairs here, so six pairs would give us our 12. Okay. And this blank would be a one. Again, anytime there's no number in front, we treat it as one. So that's the first uh, three examples. Continuing on with the next three, we've got sodium, we've got chlorine, and we have the fluorine atom. Sodium, one and one. Chlorine, one and a pair. So we need to have two at the beginning. I can put a little subscript after the Cl because this is already balanced as sodium plus and Cl minus. I can't alter that correct formula unit. So I have to say there's two formula units that fix my chlorine. Uh, it doubled my sodium, so I've got to have two sodium, so I put a two in front. And I need two fluorine atoms. I've got two at the end and I had two at the beginning. So there's going to be one fluorine and one chlorine molecule. Moving on to the uh, fifth solution, just hydrogen and oxygen to deal with. Hydrogen is coming in pairs on both sides. We've got two hydrogen here, two hydrogen in our water. That's good. Two oxygen, but only one oxygen. So I have to double and have two water molecules. Again, I can't put a little subscript after the O because this is a water molecule. I'd fundamentally change the chemical that I have. In doubling our water, I also doubled our hydrogen. There's now two pairs or four hydrogen. So I need two pairs on the reactant side and just one pair of oxygen. Okay. Moving on to our sixth example, we've got an ionic compound, a lead hydroxide, HCl, water, and uh, lead uh, to chloride. This is lead to hydroxide. So one lead, one lead. We don't really care about the charge or whether it's neutral. We're just counting the types of the count of the different types of lead that we have. So one lead, one lead. Uh, I'm going to deal with the O and H last. C, one Cl, two Cl. So I can balance that by putting a two in front. So lead is good. Chlorine is good. We're on to our hydrogen, then oxygen. Uh, hydrogen we have in two places here. We've got a pair of hydroxide, so a pair of H's, so two H's there and two more H's there. So our hydrogen count on the reactant side is two plus two in the HCl. So there's a total of four. So we need a total of four on the product side. We just have the hydrogen in one place. So I can double my water and have two pairs, four H's on the product side. Last, we have oxygen. We have two waters, so two single O's. So our O's, we have two of them in total on the product side. And on the reactant side, we have hydroxide, one O in it, and there's two of them, so we have two there. So this is balanced, and I'll fill in those one coefficients. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the seventh and eighth example, we have aluminum bromide, and we have potassium sulfate. Now a strategy for dealing with the polyatomics, this SO4 is poly or many atoms in the ion, is when the ion stays together, we can count them as a group. So we're not going to count the O and S separate. There's one sulfate here, and over here we've got sulfate. Now I'm circling just the SO4, the sulfate. I'm not circling the outside the bracket number. 
Here we have one sulfate or one yellow circle. Here we have three yellow circles or three sulfates. Okay, and counting them in groups just speeds things up and reduces errors. So going back to the beginning, we've got aluminum atoms, we've got bromide atoms or ions, we've got potassium atoms or ions, and we've got sulfate. So one aluminum, two aluminum. So I'm going to have to double this. We fixed our aluminum. We now have two triples of bromide, so two times three is six bromide. Here bromides come in singles, so I'm going to need six of those. This gives me six potassium, and here they come in pairs. It's a little hard to see that too. So I need three pairs of potassium. That tripled my yellow circle or my sulfate and I have three sulfates or three yellow circles, so that is good. So this stoichiometric coefficient is a one. Okay. Again, I could have counted the sulfur and oxygen separate, but when a polyatomic ion does not change or break up, it's easier to count as in groups. Last, we have uh, three combustion reactions to balance. Uh, when you bounce combustions, there's a strategy I like students to know. If you look at the hydrogen count, okay, which is four, okay, on the reactant side, it's always going to come in pairs on the product side. Okay. And we want to have an even number here to keep our oxygen even, because oxygen on this side must be even. It comes in pairs. So the first thing I always do is look at my hydrogen count, divide it by two, and see if it's even or odd. In this case, four by two is two, which is even. And in all these cases, you can just balance this. That we're only going to need one of our fuel. So we've got four hydrogen here. They come in pairs. We always already kind of figured out we needed two pairs and had a nice even number here. Our carbon, we've got one here, so we only need one CO2. And now we can deal for oxygen, and we're not going to have any issues because we've got this even number. They come in pairs on the product uh, reactant side. CO2 has two oxygen, and our water has two times one, two oxygen. So the oxygen on the product side is four, an, an even number, which I'd preset up. So two pairs will give us our four on the reactant side. So this combustion is now balanced. Okay. Moving on to a couple other combustion uh, reactions. Okay. You may or may not have learned the reaction types yet, but anytime you have C's and H's with oxygen and you make carbon dioxide and water, that is referred to as a combustion reaction. In number nine, I'll do that hydrogen test first. So our hydrogen count is eight. When I divide that by two, I get four, which is even. So I'm just going to need one of my fuel. So we've got three carbon, so we're going to have three CO2. The hydrogen we've already looked at, we've got eight here. They come in pairs, and that was the four that we made sure it was even. Last, we deal with our oxygen. We've got three times two, so six oxygen in the CO2, and then four times one, four in the water, so a total of 10, okay. even number, like I've set up, and that would be five pairs. One last example, and in this last one, the hydrogen count, when it comes in pairs, isn't going to be even right away. So doing my hydrogen test, we have 18 hydrogen. When they come in pairs, we're going to get nine of them. And that would be odd. So if I put a nine here, uh, this is not going to balance. We have an odd number of O's, and we can't make pairs into an odd number. So the way to deal with this is to double the fuel. That will double the hydrogen, and we'll end up doubling this nine to an 18. So when you get an odd number, when you divide the hydrogen by two, double your fuel, and then just balance it. So we now have two times eight, which is 
uh, 16 carbon dioxide. We have 2 times 18 hydrogen, so we're going to need 18 times 2 hydrogen. We've got that even number there that we want. Uh, we do a fairly high count of oxygen, so it's really handy to write this out and not do mental math. So we have 16 times 2, so that's 32 oxygen plus 18. So that's coming out to 32, and 8 is 40, and another 10 would be 50. We've got an even number of O's, which is what we want and need. When they come in pairs, you're going to need 25 pairs. So that's 10 balancing examples. Hopefully this helps you and improves uh, your balancing skills.